Hey everyone, it is Troll speaking. Today we are going to talk about how to become a really good .NET developer and also what topics you need to cover to become a really good .NET developer. For those who start their programming career in 2024, this mind map will be helpful for you to define a path and to walk through and to learn the topics, okay? So I have special mind map for you designed by me. I will share it in our Git repository also. So everything starts from software fundamental. If you are new in programming, it is always better to not start from any programming language, but start from software fundamentals. You should have the basics to switch to programming language. It doesn't matter you are using C sharp or other programming languages. It is always better to start from software fundamentals. Okay. So our software fundamentals covers programming paradigms, such object oriented programming, functional programming, procedural programming. These programming paradigms are important paradigms which we are using in our daily basis depending from your um, programming language of course for example in c sharp we are actively using object oriented programming functional programming in other programming languages you may use just functional programming or procedural programming it is always better to have a knowledge about paradigms and we also have data types variables, operators, control flows, like if, else, etc. We have a memory management topic. You need to have a basic understanding about memory management. I'm not talking about the complex topics related to memory management, but at least you should have a basic knowledge about it. You should also know about how to create functions, methods, and of course, algorithms and data structures. It is always better to cover at least 2025 20, algorithms and data structures in software fundamental. Of course, you can use any programming language or pseudocode. It is totally up to you, but the main concept stays same. So try to cover algorithms and data structures. And if you are going to be a .NET developer, some way you will use ASP.NET Core. So it is always better to understand web essentials, okay? In our web essentials, we have web protocols, the basics of HTML, CSS. It is, of course, optional, but it would be better to design a simple web page using HTML, CSS, maybe a little bit JavaScript, but it is optional. But uh, the HTML and CSS, they are not programming language, so it is totally okay to learn the basics of HTML and CSS in Web Essentials. And of course, we need to understand client server communication, request response processes, header information, and also how web server works, the concept of web server. These are the main topics we need to cover in our software fundamentals. I've separated the .NET and C Sharp because C Sharp is a part of .NET, but .NET is not a part of C Sharp. We have more than 100 programming languages in .NET. So having the basic understanding about .NET would be helpful for you to understand how behind the scenes .NET compilation process is working, okay? So we have the basic topics related to .NET like CLR, manifest, metadata, intermediate language code. Of course, they are not uh, completely simple, but at least having a basic knowledge about them, CLR's responsibility, what is manifest, what is metadata, what is intermediate language code, JIT compiler, the responsibility of JIT compiler, the forms of JIT compiler, and also FCL, BCL, CLI will be really helpful for you to understand the internals of your C sharp code, okay? In our C sharp, we have um, a little bit more topics in our software fundamentals, we covered that we have some basics and you need to map these basics from software fundamental to your C sharp because uh, in C sharp, we will start our implementation stuff. So you need to understand the C sharp fundamental classes, data types, collections, methods, control flows, the classes, records, structures, and etc. These are the main building blocks in .NET in C sharp. And of course, you need to understand encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, the object oriented elements. Of course, you need to understand how to implement them, when to implement them, why to implement them. And we have interfaces, delegates, events, exception handling, method extensions. These are also a uh, main part of our C sharp. And 
of course, mostly we are using um, uh, some sort of databases you, and we are uh, having some wrapper over our database. Unfortunately, we are not directly using uh, SQL command, SQL data reader, etc., to manipulate to database and we have ORMs, you can learn Dapper. But for me, my preferable um, ORM is going to be Entity Framework, but it is totally up to you. But at least having one ORM in your arsenal will be helpful to learn another. So from the Entity Framework, Entity Framework core perspective, we have uh, the CRUD operations like select, insert, update, delete, how to do these operations using Entity Framework. We have relational representation, how to have one-to-one, one-to-many, -to -one, one many-to-many relationship, and also how to effectively use Entity Framework because the Entity Framework is just a wrapper over our database. And in most cases, you are not directly writing query to your database. And that's why you can use a many way of implementation for retrieving, for manipulating to data. And you need to understand pros and cons of using one over another. And we have link you, link to SQL, link to entity framework, uh, link to data set, link to memory type of collections, etc. You need to master link you to work with data structures. And of course, we have functional programming. In my YouTube channel, I have covered a lot of topics related to functional programming in C Sharp. You need to understand what is a functional programming, why functional programming, when functional programming, and how functional programming, okay? We are not just working with database. Of course, we are working with different type of data representations like JSON, now like simple file, XML. So uh, working with data representations is also really important. And in C-Sharp, we have one of the most important and a bit complex topic called concurrency. You need to understand concurrency. You need to understand forms of concurrency, the multi-threading, parallel programming, asynchronous programming, reactive programming, you need to understand how to use task parallel library, of course. And we have some complex topics related to concurrence like synchronization, race condition, context switching, deadlocks. And you, in your concurrency topic, you should cover all these subtopics. Well, that's all about our C Sharp. Having just simply C Sharp in your arsenal will not be enough. Of course, the, as a language, it is enough. But in a real world, we are using some sort of technologies to develop applications. For example, for desktop applications, we are using WPF. For older ones, we are using Windows Forms. For the classical web applications, we are using ASP.NET Core, especially for APIs, ASP.NET Core Web API. For the graphical ones, Razor Pages, MVC. So it will would be better to cover these technologies like ASP.NET Core for general learning. We have a lot of interesting topics in ASP.NET Core, which is completely same for Web API, Razor Pages, MVC, etc. So starting from ASP.NET Core is going to be a really good point for you. Then it would be better to switch Web API or depending from your company's requirement, you may switch to MVC or Razor Pages. We have Signal R for the desktop based applications. We have WPF and we have Blazor, which is really cool tool to do all the things using only C sharp in your client and in your server side. Okay. And we have databases, of course, we are of course using entity framework, Dapper, etc. But in most cases in my career, I have more than 10 years of experience working as a software developer and in most cases, I've used this uh, database skills. From the database perspective, you need to cover two type of database, relational database and NoSQL. For the relational database, it would be better to understand your joins, common table expressions, pivoting, views, functions, story procedures, DDL, data definition language operations, DML operations, indexes, grouping, aggregating, and working with JSON XML, of course. I haven't covered some advanced topics related to database because nowadays we are not completely using the database stuff, but in some cases you may need all these topics. So it would be better for you to have all these tools in your arsenal. And for the huge app 
applications, we are using NoSQL type of databases. Uh, you can use a WS Azure type of NoSQL databases, but they have some common general topics like flexible data models, scalability, high availability, eventual consistency, different types of NoSQL databases. It would be better to have at least one NoSQL database. For example, MongoDB may be a good starting point for you to learn NoSQL and the most of the concepts are completely applicable for other type of NoSQL, okay? Now let's scroll a little bit down and we have messaging and streaming tools. Nowadays, we are actively using microservices, distributed systems. We are developing a lot of distributed systems. And for that reason, you should cover at least one messaging, one streaming tools. We have really cool tools for .NET. We're using Azure Service Pass, RabbitMQ, Mass Transit, Apache Kafka, AWS Kinesis. And depending from your requirements, you can select any of them. For example, especially for me, Apache Kafka is a really cool tool for streaming, for the messaging. You can use Apache Kafka also, RabbitMQ, Mass Transit. They are really cool tools. I have used Azure Service Pass, RabbitMQ, Mass Transit, Apache Kafka in my career. And of course, using the AVS Kinesis would be also a good option for you. And let's switch to containerization. We already know that we have a lot of applications to be installed to prepare our environment okay for the for example for the .NET, you should install some messaging streaming tool your database and you should configure your infrastructure and all this stuff requires a lot of installation process which our containerization covers and helps us to not to install every time the same applications and for the containerization my I prefer to learn Docker and for the orchestration I prefer to learn Kubernetes and in most cases people use Docker and Kubernetes these terms together from the Docker perspective it would be really cool for you to learn the essentials why, how, when to use Docker, the basic commands, and of course, Docker Compose. Without Docker Compose, it would be really hard for us to prepare our services, our infrastructure. From the Kubernetes perspective, you may cover some essential topics like clusters, pods, deployments, services, namespaces, networking, scaling, storage. They may sound a little bit scary, but when you dive into details, you see that they are really simple topics, not complex topics and from the version control perspective of course as a software developer we always use the version control system i always prefer to use git or you can use the any other version control system they have um, a lot of common topics from the git perspective it has two uh, aspects for me one for basics the other one for advanced for the basics it would be better to understand how to use the basic commands like working with repositories commits branches merge push pull and also for the advanced topics rebase stashing git hooks sub modules yeah this is a really cool topic detach head resolving merge conflicts bare repositories forks etc yeah at having really uh, middle level skills related to git would be enough for you uh, to cover at least 90 percent of your work okay and from the testing perspective of course it is not possible for us to develop application without testing you need to have unit tests integration tests end-to-end -end tests you can use for example for the unit test you can use x unit in unit and for the integration tests we have a lot of interesting tools and of course for the final one you need to cover end-to-end -end testing the last in our mind map is going to be design and architecture it is last but for me it is one of the important topics you need to cover to become a really good dotnet developer okay as a starting point as a self-learner or as a newbie 
it is totally okay for now to bypass this topic but in the future to become a really strong junior middle senior type of developer you need to cover these topics completely okay we have design patterns uh, we have essential design patterns enterprise architectural patterns at least we should cover some most important design patterns in .NET. we have 10 12 design patterns mostly use design patterns you may start from there of course in .NET we have more than 100 design patterns but at least having the 10 15 of them in your arsenal would be better as a starting point okay you need to understand solid design patterns okay solid design principles single responsibility open closet list of substitution interface segregation and dependency inversion principles and where to go without microservices nowadays we are developing a lot of microservices that's why we cover it here our messaging stuff okay the messaging streaming so understanding microservices uh differentiating microservices with service oriented architecture monolith approach and having a synchronous asynchronous microservice communication the problems microservices bring with them uh, the advantages disadvantages would be really helpful for you okay and we have writing clean code refactoring you should first start to develop and then using your advanced skills design patterns design principles you should start to refactor your code that's how we are becoming a really good developer it is not a preferable way as a self-learner as a newbie in 2024 to directly start from the design patterns design principles start from software fundamentals then select your language in our case we have c sharp try to write a c sharp code try to experiment fail and try again fail and try again and after some years two or three years you will start to really understand these design patterns design principles and apply them to your practice